All right, hi, we're here with Brendan Brinkman, who's Senior Product Manager from Olympus. Brendan, I know you're excited about the, the new FlowView FVMPE. It's a functional brain mapping system. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, we're, we're extremely excited about this. Uh, it's going to really advance the science. It's been de designed specifically to handle some of the greatest challenges uh, with the optogenetic brain mapping stimulation uh, designs that are out there today. Uh, First and foremost, we now have a resonant scanning system, but all of these systems are hybrid scanning systems. So they have not only a high precision galvanometer scanner, but also an industry leading resonant scanner. Now the resonant scanner, we're very proud of the implementation of this technology. Resonant scanners have been around for quite some time, uh, but there have been problems with them. Uh, because of the acceleration of the resonant galvo, uh, you actually have nonlinearity in the signal. So you'll either get distortion at the edges where objects will appear larger, uh, or you have shading at the edges where things are dimmer uh, in the outside periphery of the field of view. We've corrected for all of that because we have a nonlinear sampling clock. Also, we've uh, significantly minimized uh, any of the jitter associated with resonance scanning. So you get very high speed images with uh, crisp definition. Okay, so I know um, that some uh, some systems, you know, in order to, do, to correct for for that linear that nonlinearity, you you have to essentially zoom in to a, to a smaller field of view, right? Right. So uh, talk a little bit about that and how how the uh, FB. MPE handles that. Yeah, so the nice thing about being able to handle this field uniformity uh, with the nonlinear sampling clock is that we don't have to zoom in. You get the same field of view with the main uh, Galvo scanner as you do with the resonant scanner and it's a, a beautiful implementation. So if, if you have to zoom in uh, on a cluster of firing cells, uh, it doesn't really help you to map uh, larger brain areas. So seeing multiple cells firing in the largest field of view possible is a really critical element of some of these functional brain mapping systems. Right, okay. Now I know you're also very proud about the, the depth of field that you can get uh, and how deep into the tissue you can get. Can you expand a bit on that? Yeah, absolutely. There are many things about this system that have been specialized and optimized. Uh, it's certainly one of the most sensitive systems I've ever seen. Uh, as we're looking at this data set here, what you see is we're imaging from the cortical surface of a living mouse all the way down into the CA1 region of the hippocampus. Uh, m many systems out there, you'd be happy if you uh, got 500, 600, maybe even 800 microns into uh, the brain tissue. Uh, but we're getting past the white fiber here uh, in the corpus callosum and down into the cell bodies of the CA1 in the hippocampus. And you can actually see the dendrite extensions going even further beyond. So we're 1,300 microns into the tissue. Imaging in the hippocampus has long been a goal of neuroscientists because it helps to understand some questions about memory and learning. Uh, so this kind of uh, resolution and detail that far in is really extraordinary. That kind of resolution and detail in a living animal. In a living animal, yes. This is not, not anything unusual. This is a thigh one uh, YFP H-line mouse, uh, one of the favorites of the neuroscience community right now. Uh, so here we are imaging into it, a anesthetized animal and uh, wow. with very good definition. That is amazing. So earlier you mentioned uh, about the, the speed of the acquisition, how many mm -hmm. frames per second essentially you can get. Can you walk us uh, through some data that, that kind of illustrates that? Sure, absolutely. Well, everybody knows what a beating heart looks like. Uh, here we have a data set acquired at 512 by 512 pixels, uh, and this is 30 frames per second. And we're capturing that with really good definition in both uh, bright field and uh, multi-photon with some uh, genetically tagged GFP cells. Uh, so very good, crisp, clear definition. We can slow that right down. Uh, now, if we want to go even faster than that, we can get up to as high as a 438 frame per second speed. This is an industry leading specification. We can do that at 512 by 32, and we don't have to zoom in to achieve that. I'll show you what that data set looks like right now. So at 438 frames per second, we've had to slow this down tremendously, but you can see the timestamp here. And you can see this individual blood cell moving through. So capturing blood flow, either for stroke models or uh, any other high-speed physiology, would be really uh, an appropriate application for this instrument. Amazing. So let's talk about how you're achieving this. Can you take us through sort of the system as a whole and, and uh, some of the improvements that you've made to actually get to this point? Yeah, absolutely. Let's walk over here and I'll show you some of the light path and some of the other special things for optogenetic stimulation. 
Okay, so Brendan, can you walk us through some of the technology behind how you're getting this amazing depth of field? Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of engineering that went into this particular instrument and the things that we're able to achieve with it. Great. So, like what? What, what, uh, what are some of the biggest changes that, uh, that you've made? Well, first off, we're now implementing uh, the new InSight laser from Spectrophysics. Uh, there are a couple of different versions of this laser, but the important thing about it is that it extends its tuning range. So you can go from 690 nanometers all the way to 1300 nanometers. Uh, that allows researchers to have access to dyes like Psi 5 and Psi 7. Now, all of these systems can have up to two lasers, uh, and the routing optics that control these lasers are very important. How you treat the beam in multi-photon microscopy is really critical. So we make sure that all of the lasers that we use are dispersion compensated. That makes sure that the femtosecond pulses reaching the sample are still nice and tight as they go into the tissue. In addition, if we have multiple laser lines, uh, we can have two AOMs in the system so that you have attenuation on both of those for complex area scanning and, uh, and different attenuation levels. Also, each of these laser lines has its own beam expansion capability, so we can precisely control how the beam is put into the back aperture of the objective. Mm -hmm. This allows us to do things like our deep focusing mode. The deep focusing mode uh, is a new technique that we have. We've been able to account for the scattering in tissue so we can get much brighter signal uh, even at the greatest depths. The other thing that we've implemented with this routing optics uh, is a quadriline optics. These quadriline optics are actually a four-axis auto-alignment mechanism. We can have that for each of the laser lines independently. Some systems out there have two-axis auto-alignment, and that's nice because that can take care of field non-uniformity and shading. But what it doesn't take account of is as you tune these lasers back and forth, you can have slight angle adjustments mm -hmm. at, uh, at, in the angle at which the uh, laser enters the instrument. Mm -hmm. This fundamentally has a problem for co-localization of different fluorescent proteins. So if you're optimally exciting GFP at say 920, and then YFP at 960, uh, or RFP at 1100, you might have mislocalization of those signals by the time you uh, got your final image. So we've taken care of all of that. Whether you're tuning the laser back and forth to different wavelengths, or uh, if you have a two laser system, one of the things we're proud of with this, we've always been able to use two lasers on a system. We call these twin laser systems. With this particular system, not only can you use the main laser uh, for imaging and the second laser for two-photon stimulation, mm -hmm. but we can also combine both of those lasers uh, in the same light path. So you can do two-color optimized multi-photon excitation experiments. And you can either do those simultaneously or rapidly switch between the laser lines since each of the laser lines is controlled by an acousto-optic modulator. Interesting, okay. Let's talk about some of the other uh, other developments that you've, you've made with this, uh, with this microscope. I know you were talking about the objectives and some of the new objectives that were coming online. Can you talk, uh, tell us what we can expect? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we've been very proud of our uh, scale view objectives, uh, the long working distance, high numerical aperture objectives. We've really been a pioneer in that field. Uh, so from a two millimeter 25X objective with a very high numerical aperture, we also have a four millimeter working distance objective, which works with water or scale view or ACSF, what have you, uh, and also an eight millimeter scale view objective very high numerical aperture objectives. Now, some new clearing techniques have come out recently, and we're going to be introducing uh, 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 lenses that match those refractive indices. We have CDB from Riken, and also uh, from the Dyserock lab, we have the new clarity technique. And we have lenses at both 25x and 10x magnifications that can handle both of those refractive indices. So as we're controlling both of these laser beams, we can introduce them either into the main scanner here, which contains uh, the high-precision galvanometer scanner and the resonance scanner, and also another optional SIM scanner. The SIM scanner is another set of galvanometer uh, mirrors, which allows you to simultaneously stimulate while you are imaging with the main laser. 
Uh, this is a really important thing because if you have delay in some of these highly precise uh, optogenetic uh, experiments and high speed physiology experiments, uh, then you're going to miss some of the critical activity, mm -hmm. particularly if you're uh, synchronizing with electrophysiology or any other external device. So we are able to use that SIM scanner uh, not only with the multi-photon laser, so you can have focally restricted stimulation, but you can also have uh, a visible laser combiner in here. And we've selected three visible laser lines uh, that are important for the neuroscience community. A 4.5 laser for doing certain kinds of uncaging experiments, a 458 nanometer laser for doing channel rhodopsin stimulation, and a 588 laser for doing halo rhodopsin. Now there are all sorts of variants out there, uh, and one of the things that's nice is for the two photon uh, excitation and stimulation of these opsins, uh, we have a number of ways of uh, stimulating them that are uh, more effective than traditional two photon systems have been able to achieve. Uh, one of those, uh, for the traditional channel rhodopsins, uh, is a different tornado scan. So we've had the tornado scan for quite some time on our flagship FE1200 systems. Uh, we now have two different types of tornado scan in the FV MPERS. We can either maintain constant angular velocity or constant linear velocity. Uh, and this uh, is going to be very helpful for, helpful for people who are using some of the early channel rhodopsin uh, uh, techniques. Now some of the newer uh, channel rhodopsin and halo rhodopsin uh, variants, uh, they can be stimulated by a raster scan. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing about our multi-point mapping software uh, is that uh, you can not only fly between points very rapidly and stimulate in very complex patterns, but at each of those we can do what's called a complement mode scan, where you, where you do a little raster and we can uh, expand that area uh, so that you get more efficient excitation and a larger area of excitation. Mm -hmm. In addition, because we have uh, the independent beam expanders on each of these lines, we can control the point spread function of the laser. Mm -hmm. That means we can expand the excitation volume so we can get enough of the opsins uh, excited in a two-photon experiment. A very powerful set of uh, tools for people who are doing optogenetic stimulation. Okay, so why is two-color multi-photon laser excitation important? Uh, well, I, I know uh, from first-hand experience that, that when I was building my own two-photon routing optics uh, and trying to excite with uh, a single laser line, if you park your laser in the middle uh, in some intermediate space between the excitation between GFP and RFP, for instance, uh, you can do it, uh, but sometimes you have to turn up the laser power uh, to do so, which means you may damage your tissue. Uh, you'll also get channel crosstalk between those uh, uh, two uh, fluorescent fluorophores. So having two independent uh, multi-photon laser lines, just as with uh, visible scanning confocal, where you have multiple laser lines to get clear separation between fluorophores uh, and also reduce phototoxicity, uh, having multiple uh, two photon laser lines is a, is a very nice implementation of the technology. And that's a very easy thing for us to do. So combining uh, multicolor uh, excitation capabilities with uh, simultaneous stimulation uh, is, is a real achievement with this system. Now, because we have those independent laser lines and we can use our specialized multipoint mapping software, that means you could be using uh, the main Galvo scanner to be stimulating with channel rhodopsin and halo rhodopsin. So you could stimulate in one area, suppress uh, in another area, and uh, do some more complicated protocols that I'd love to tell you about over here. Perfect. Okay, so uh, the system is clearly a very precise, it's a very powerful system. Can you talk a little bit about the software behind it? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we've carried on with a lot of the, the capabilities from the FE1200 multi-photon systems, uh, particularly the multi-point mapping software. This is a very precise uh, software, really designed for optogenetic stimulation and precise control. We can very rapidly fly between multiple points uh, in a sample in X, Y, and Z, uh, to do precise stimulation. But optogenetics requires a very tight synchronization, very tight uh, uh and careful and accurate uh, stimulation protocols. So to achieve this, we've made sure to implement our own real-time controller. 
The reason that's important is that if you have a system where the acquisition is driven from, say, a Windows 7 operating system, the timing won't necessarily be uh, ac absolutely perfect. Mm -hmm. So we use uh, a, a real-time controller in the system to make sure that we have microsecond order precision timing uh, for really complex protocols mm -hmm. where you might want to be doing uh, multiple types of stimulation in one field of view, different types in another field of view. We can maintain the accuracy over days uh, to 100 milliseconds uh, in how those work with, 100 mic with one microsecond precision internally to each of those protocols. So it's a very robust system in terms of timing control. Interesting, all right. Now I know there are also some functionalities that allow you to do some electrophysiological um, experiments. Can yes. you talk a bit about that? Yes, absolutely. So some of the paradigms involved in this, once you couple genetically encoded calcium indicators, GCAMP6 being uh, the most recent, with a very fast, very uh, bright, responsive uh, uh, calcium indicator dyes, you can be imaging that simultaneously while you're stimulating with our SIM scanner, either in two photon or visible wavelengths, but you can also have uh, all of that synchronized with electrophysiology recordings. Uh, this is really important for uh, validating uh, some of the fluorescent fluctuations and neural architecture pathways that people are investigating these days. The other thing that's nice about the system is that optogenetics has often involved fiber probe introduction into brains. Uh, with our system, we can TTL synchronize with external devices. So if someone wants to be imaging that very fast GCAM, uh, they could also be uh, stimulating uh, precisely in a focal volume with the two photon laser, while also stimulating with the deep brain areas with a fiber optic probe introduction, all synchronized with electrophysiology. So it's a very robust system for all of these applications. Wow, so at the end of the day, it sounds like you, you've really developed the system with, with neuro the, the neuroscientist in mind, right? This absolutely, is... absolutely. We're really proud of this system. We're hoping it advances the science. Yeah, great. All right, well, Brandon, thanks a lot for talking with us. Thanks.